I would say to my friend, <clears throat> we would be happy to have that vote tonight. And I would also mention to my friend, the House of Representatives intends to vote on the Reed Amendment tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. Mr. President, I say through the chair to my friend, the distinguished Republican leader, let's hope they're more timely in their one o'clock vote tomorrow than they have been the last few days. Let me just say, this is almost an out-of-body experience to have, uh, have someone suggest that we have a 50-vote uh, threshold on a matter of this uh, magnitude here in the United States Senate. I'm perplexed, Mr. President, the genuinely perplexed that my friend, the majority leader, doesn't want to vote on his proposal. Mr. President, so it's obvious to the world, to the United States Senate, that there is now another filibuster. That's what this is. It's a filibuster to stop us from moving forward on legislation. I agree with the president. I think he's entitled uh, to a vote on his jobs bill. Uh, the suggestion that uh, Senate Republicans are not interested in voting on his jobs bill is not true. To tack this on to the China currency manipulation legislation is nothing more than a political stunt. We all know that. If, if my friend is saying we're not going to vote on it now, I'd be happy to talk to him about reaching some kind of understanding to vote on it later. Uh, but my feeling here is that the least we can do for the president is give him a chance to have a vote on his proposal now, as he has requested on numerous occasions. What a charade we have going on here. We're in the midst of some of the most important legislation we've done this entire year. China currency manipulation. And we now have a proposal that is ridiculous on its face. That is, we vote with no debate on the President's jobs bill. And I would say to my friend, we can stay here all day. I will get the last word. So we can, we can, we can, we can, it's 1020 now. If we want to stand to 1120, I'm going to get the last word on our conversation here today. Mr. President, it certainly is the case that the majority leader can always have the last word. But I would say with all due respect to, to my friend, he just made another campaign speech. I think what the American people would like to see us do is actually pass something together that will become law. Republican leader and I just spent a minute uh, commiserating on the fact that we follow both of us very closely, the Washington Nationals, and we talk often about um, how they fare on a given day. And we talk about the Las Vegas young man, Bryce Harper, often, because he's really a phenomenon. This is one thing that the leaders on both sides fully agree on. Uh, we're hoping Harper has a speedy recovery and back in the lineup. Hope Plus he's at. You're both wearing the same suit today. Yes, we, ch we try. We try. Uh, the senator from day. California said our wearing the same suits. We, we try to match wardrobes. <laughs> the majority leader's own words. Breaking the rules to change the rules is un-American. His words, not mine. I just hope the majority leader thinks about his legacy. Here is what Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky said a few years ago. Direct quote. The Senate has repeatedly adjusted its rules as circumstances dictate. The other <laughs> uh, Alice in Wonderland statement made by my friend is, the majority leader can set votes whenever he wants. Oh, don't I wish. The majority leader, I'm sure, will remind everybody he always gets the last word, so that I'm sure he'll speak again. So at the core of this is the majority leader's word to his colleagues in the Senate as to what the rules would be for this Congress. He gave the word, his word, and now he appears to be on the verge of breaking his word. My friend, the Republican leader, continues to ignore his words that he would process nominations consistent with the norms and traditions of the Senate. Please, please, that's just ignored by him. If anyone thinks since the first of this year that the norms and traditions of the Senate have been followed by the Republican leader, they're living in gaga land. 